Hello friends and welcome at my channel. Today I would like to show you that every function uh, can be written as the sum of an even and an odd part. Let me maybe start with an example to show you what I what I mean by saying this. Well, you remember maybe that the even function was defined if this property is fulfilled for every x uh, of the domain f of x is equal to f of minus x which basically means the function is symmetric to considering the y-axis. And for the, so this is an even function, and we're talking about an odd function. If f of minus x is equal to minus f of x. So if those two are fulfilled, we're fine. All right. Um, considerably. So, I mean, we're having even function definition and odd function definition. That's it. All right. The next step is, let us see if we have, for example, well, let's say f of x equals to 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x minus 7. Can we separate it somehow? Um, and the answer is, yes, we could. We could write it down as um, 2x cubed plus 4x. Let me put it into parentheses and 3x squared minus 7. And now you see this is an odd part. I mean, this is the function which perfectly fulfills the conditioning of being an odd function. And this is the part where we are even. All right. So let's call it, um, this is odd. So O of x. And let's call this one E of x. Is it, is it true? Is it correct? Well, for e of x, what is e of minus x? You see, we're putting instead of x minus x into the equation, and we are basically having the same. So that's the same as e of x, which proves our assumption. And 2x cubed plus 4x, well, what would be uh, o, o of minus x? Well, you see, o of minus x would be 2 minus x cubed plus 4 times minus x, that would be minus 2x cubed, minus 4x, which is minus 2x cubed plus 4x, which is minus o of x check. So that seems to be working. I mean, every polynomial function, I'm giving an example, can be written like this. That makes sense, all right? Now let's move on. Is it a more interesting example? Well, let's see if we are talking about f of x being equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x. What's the graph of this? Well, we're having trouble at 1, right? So this is where the function is um, having a um, problem in division by 0. And we are basically um, having, well, I could also rewrite it as minus 1 divided over x minus 1. And that means, well, that would be 1 divided by x, but we are having a negative sign, so we're switching. And that means this one is going here, and this one is going up. Let me check. If x is 0, we have 1. So that's the story. All right? That's the graph. It seems like, well, it's not symmetric considering the origin, and it's not symmetric considering the y-axis either. It's kind of symmetric considering this point, but it's not symmetric considering uh, 0, 0, the origin. But we could modify it a little bit. Let me show you. We consider 1 divided by 1 minus x. And if we multiply it times 1, which is 1 plus x divided over 1 plus x, we would have 1 plus x divided over 1 minus x squared. Now we can write it as 1 divided over 1 minus x squared plus x divided over 1 minus x squared. And I'm claiming now this is an even part and this is an odd part. Do you see that? Well, I'm claiming this is even and this is odd. All right. Let me show that to you. Um, if that's even, that means e of minus x would be um, 1 divided over 
1 minus minus x squared, which is 1 divided over 1 minus x squared. Check. That's the same as e of x. And what about o of minus x? That would be minus x divided over 1 minus minus x squared. That would be minus x divided over 1 minus x squared. And this is minus o of x. Also check for the odd part. So that seems to be possible to rewrite every function as a sum of an odd and of an even part. And if we see it for the first time, we must say, well, how could it be? Well, let us say we would assume it works. Okay, so let's say f of x is the sum of o of x plus e of x, where o is odd and e would be even. Right, so what would that mean? Well, that would mean that f of minus x, that would be o of minus x plus e of minus x. That would be, since o is odd, it's minus o of x um, plus e of x still. All right. So we kind of have two statements, one for f of x and one for f of minus x. Now let us consider the sum of f of x and f of minus x. What would we have? Well, as you can see, this one and that were uh, cancelling out, so we have 2e of x, which means e of x is f of x plus f of minus x divided by 2. Is it really an even function? Well, yes, it is. I mean, if you have e to the power e of minus x, this is f of minus x plus f of minus minus x divided by 2, which means you have f of minus x plus f of x divided by 2, which is perfectly e of x. So lucky me, right? And now let's come, let's come back to our definition of our function and say, well, what is the odd part, o of x? Well, this is f of x minus e of x. So basically, uh, we know now the value of e of x. We can substitute it right here and solve it for o of x. So let me write it down. o of x is equal to f of x uh, minus e of x, which is f of x minus, what do we have for e of x? Well, you see it's f of minus x plus f of x divided by 2. So we have f of minus x, changing my location, plus f of x divided by 2. We bring it to the same denominator, which means we have 2 f of x. Now we have minus f of minus x, and now we also have minus f of x. We still divided by 2. Now we have f of x minus f of minus x, and we're dividing it by 2. This is an odd part, okay? Which means f of x is the sum of even part and odd part, and we also showed how it works. I mean, we proved it's possible, and we also wrote down the algorithm how to how to make it happen. Let me let me write it down. So this was e of x. So that means f of minus x plus f of x divided by two, and o of x was here, f of x minus f of minus x divided by 2 as well. All right. Now we see we have the same denominators and this one with plus, this one with minus. We have 2 f of x divided by 2, which is just f of x. Check. So it was no coincidence we were able to write it down. But let me show you maybe one more interesting example with the real function e of x, not just the function e uh, for x for the even function, but with the real function e of x that we're working with. Um, let me just show you using this. So once again, um, o and e. Um, e of x was, let me write it down, memorizing it. This is f of minus plus f of x. Well, it should be somehow 
memorizing it maybe. This is an even part and an odd part is with minus, right? Mm, yes, f of x minus f x minus f of minus x. Well, by the way, we can check it clearly that um, this is an odd part, right? I mean, let me clearly uh, shortly show it to you. So we have f of minus x minus f of minus minus x divided by 2. That would be um, f of minus x minus f of x divided by 2. And if we take minus in front, this one is becoming, this one is becoming minus, and this one is becoming plus. So we got f of x minus f of minus x divided by 2, and this is really minus o of x. So check. Okay, but now what I want to show you is, let us pretend f of x that we're working with is e to the power of x. So like the real Euler's function. Well, Obviously, now we learned it should be possible to write it down as a sum of those two functions. So that should be e of x minus e of minus x divided by 2 plus, it was the odd part, and now e of minus x plus e of x divided by 2 as well. So the, maybe you've already learned it. This is the even part. And this is the so-called cosine hyperbolic. And this is the odd part. And this is the sine hyperbolic. Okay. And they have all kinds of different properties. But they are really even and odd correspondingly. Okay. Hope it helped. Thanks for watching. All the best. And see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.